Hello, uh, this is the B3.2 Geometry of Surfaces, Lecture 1. Uh, so my primary reference for this course will be the Hitchin online lecture notes. Um, there's various notes by Ritter, Siegel, Earl, and so on, which are also helpful. Uh, and there are lots of books available. So surfaces are two-dimensional objects uh, in pictures. Uh, here is the two-sphere. Um, here is the two-dimensional torus. This would be a surface of genus 2, uh, and so on. Uh, there are many different kinds of surfaces. Um, you can make surfaces out of plasticine or Play-Doh. Um, so this course will discuss three different kinds of surfaces. Uh, firstly, um, <coughs> topological surfaces, which are special examples of topological spaces. Uh, this will be covered in lectures 1 to 5. Um, and in section two of the Hitchin lecture notes. Some highlights uh, of our treatment of topological surfaces will be the Euler characteristic uh, of a topological surface, um, the notion of orientability, uh, a surface can be orientable or not orientable, and the classification uh, of compact surfaces. It turns out that if you know the Euler characteristic of a surface and you know whether it's orientable or not, then you know what the surface is uh, up to isomorphism. The second notion of surface uh, is Riemann surfaces. So these are a generalization of complex analysis um, and are surfaces which have a notion of holomorphic function. So Riemann surfaces are topological spaces together with um, an extra geometric structure. Uh, the structure which tells you which complex functions on the surfaces are holomorphic, broadly. Um, and they'll be the subject of lectures 5 through to 8 and the Hitchin Notes section 3. Um, some highlights of the Riemann surfaces uh, part of the course uh, is the Riemann Hurwitz formula. The third kind of surface we're going to talk about are smooth surfaces, um, which may or may not be. Uh, embedded in R3, uh, three-dimensional space, uh, as the surface of some object, for example. Um, uh, we can also consider abstract surfaces uh, which don't come with an embedding in three-dimensional space. Uh, this is a topic of the last half of the course, uh, lectures 9 through to 16, um, and uh, sections 4 and sections 5. So a smooth surface is also a topological space with an additional geometric structure. Uh, one which tells you uh, which functions on the surface uh, into the reals are smooth. Uh, but we also consider uh, extra geometric structures on top of the smooth surface, namely uh, a second fundamental form, or Riemannian metric. Um, and some highlights of this part of the course are the notion of Gaussian curvature. Uh, that's a function you attach to a Riemannian metric. Uh, the gauss bonnet theorem notion of GAD6 uh, and hyperbolic geometry. So these are all part of Riemannian geometry, uh, which is um, an area of geometry which studies uh, two-dimensional surfaces or, or higher dimensional surfaces, which are called manifolds, uh, together with a notion of distance. So uh, this course is a little bit like a taster menu uh, in a restaurant. It gives you a little bit of lots of subjects. Uh, so we don't really do anything properly in depth. And the subjects which uh, this is hinting at are actually vast, and you can spend years learning them. Um, and I won't have time to say a lot of things I would like to. Um, and if you want to do the course well, then you should probably do some extra reading. Uh, so for example, topological surfaces, um, you could go off in the direction of topological manifolds, uh, or um, oil characteristic is a part of uh, the subject of algebraic topology. Um, Riemann surfaces uh, is really um, the kind of one-dimensional case of complex geometry, um, which is again a huge subject. Uh, smooth surfaces and Riemannian metrics upon them uh, is um, the beginnings of differential geometry and Riemannian geometry, which again are very big subjects. Okay, so let's move on uh, 
to section two, which will be about topological surfaces. Uh, and we'll begin with section 2.1 uh, on the background from topology. Uh, so uh, A5 topology is uh, an essential for this course. Uh, if you don't know about topology, then I suggest that you um, pause at this point and go away and find out. Um, one of my favourite books, undergraduate texts on topology, would be the book by uh, Wilson Sutherland on introduction to topological spaces. So let's just uh, remember that a topological space uh, is a set X uh, to with, together with a collection curly T of subsets of X. Uh, these subsets are called open sets in X. They have to have three properties. Firstly, uh, the empty set is open and the entirety of X is open. Secondly, if you have any two open sets U and V, then the intersection U intersection V is in two T. So the intersection of open sets is open. By induction, that means that the intersection of a finite number of open sets uh, is open. Thirdly, if you have um, possibly infinitely many uh, open sets uh, in T, parameterized by some indexing set big I, then the union of those uh, open sets is also open. So finite intersections of open sets are open, but arbitrary unions of open sets are open. So a map F going between X and Y, uh, two topological spaces, is called continuous if whenever V is an open set in Y, then the pullback F inverse of V is an open set in X. Um, a topological space is called Hausdorff uh, if whenever two points x and y are in big X, which are different, x is not equal to y, then you can find open uh, sets u containing x and v containing little y, uh, with u in section v as the empty set. A topological space x is called compact if every open cover of x has a finite subcover. Um, so being compact kind of means that there aren't any infinite ends. Um, so for example, R would not be compact because you can go to infinity uh, without... Um, so another form of compactness uh, is that every sequence should have a subsequence which has a limit. A function f going from 2x into y is a homeomorphism. Uh, if it is continuous, an invertible with continuous inverse. So homeomorphisms are isomorphisms of topological spaces. Um, finally, uh, if X is a topological space, Y is contained in X as a subset, uh, then the subspace topology on Y is TY, which is the intersection Y intersect U of all open sets uh, in X. Um, and implicitly, whenever we define something as a subspace, uh, for example, we define if we define the two sphere as the set of points of radius one in R three. Uh, if we define something as a subset of a topological space, then implicitly we give it the subspace topology. Um, perhaps one other thing I could add uh, is um, there's a notion of when a topological space is second countable. Uh, that means the topology has a countable basis, where a basis for the uh, topological space is um, a set of open sets such that every other open set um, is a union of finite intersections of sets in the basis. So uh, you really need to be familiar with these uh, ideas of topological spaces and with uh, basic instructions uh, by which are done in topology such as uh, making forming a quotient topological space. Okay, so now let's define topological surfaces. So um, a topological surface, or in this part of the course, we'll often just refer to them as surfaces. A surface X is a Hausdorff topological space, such that each point little x in big X has an open neighborhood U, together with a homeomorphism phi going from U into V, uh, to an open subset V containing R2. So in the triple U and V and phi, 
is called a chart on X. So charts are not going to play a particularly important role in this first part, uh, but then later on when we uh, talk about Riemann surfaces or smooth surfaces, uh, the definition is going to make very heavy use of this notion of charts. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, a few remarks. Uh, firstly, in older books, a surface uh, is called closed uh, if it is compact. Um, so I'm not going to use uh, that term because I feel it's likely to get confused with the notion of closed set. Um, secondly, um, it's better to also require your surface X to be either second countable uh, or paracompact. Yeah, second countable is, is actually the, the better notion. It's slightly stronger in this context. Um, these are both global topological conditions, um, and but they are automatic uh, for compact surfaces, uh, which is what we mostly care about. So for simplicity, we're not going to worry about uh, second countability or paracompactness. Um, but if you go and read the definition of smooth manifold, let's say, in a book about um, differential geometry, then um, hopefully it will include the notion of second countability, um, which excludes some non-compact surfaces or whatever, which are in some sense very, very big. Um, thirdly, uh, we can generalize this definition of topological surfaces to define the notion of topological manifold of dimension n. So we can define a topological manifold to be a Hausdorff topological space. Um, for uh, Ideally, we'd also define it, uh, require it to be second countable, um, which is locally homeomorphic to r to the n. That is, each point in x has an open neighborhood, which is homeomorphic to an open set in r to the n. So then, surfaces, as we define them, are just topological manifolds of dimension 2. So we'll see later uh, that compact surfaces can be completely classified. Uh, you can understand them very, very explicitly. Uh, however, uh, in dimensions n greater than 2, classifying top compact topological n-manifolds is very difficult. Um, actually, in some sense, it's most difficult in dimensions 3 and 4, uh, and then after dimension five, it starts to get easier. But even so, the answer is uh, very, very complicated. So two dimensions are uncharacteristically simple in um, the world of, of topological manifolds. Okay, let's look at some examples. Uh, firstly, uh, any open subset X of R2 is a topological surface which you can cover by a single chart, u, v, phi, in which u and v are both equal to x, and phi is the identity map. A second example, let's think about the two-sphere, uh, S2, uh, which is the set of points x and y and z in three-dimensional space R3, which x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. So implicitly, we mean that R3 is a topological space with the usual topology, and then S2 has a subset topology, that is, uh, open subsets of S2 are the intersections of S2 with open subsets of R3. Now we can cover the two-sphere by two charts, um, u1, v1, phi1, u2, v2, phi2. So let's take uh, u1 to be the two-sphere, take away at the south pole, 0, 0, minus 1, uh, u2, to be S2 take away the North Pole, 0, 0, 1. Uh, those points are the intersection of the z-axis with the two-sphere. We'll take V1 and V2 to be R squared. And the maps phi i, uh, identifying ui with vi, are given by phi 1 of x, y, y, z is the point x, y divided by 1 plus z. So that obviously has a pole when z is minus 1, which is why we exclude the Point zero zero minus one, and phi two of x y z uh, is x y divided by one minus z. That again has a pole when z equals one, so we exclude the point zero zero one. So um, you can't cover a two sphere with one chart. Uh, you need at least two. Uh, for more complicated surfaces, uh, you may need uh, many charts to cover the entirety 
of your surface. Okay, so S2 is locally homeomorphic to R squared. Um, it is Hausdorff and also second countable uh, because it's a subspace of R3, uh, which is both Hausdorff and second countable. And um, Hausdorff and second countable are inherited by uh, subspaces. So therefore, S2 is a topological surface. Um, it's also compact by the heine borel theorem because uh, it is uh, closed and bounded in R3. 